Yo, yo, yo. Welcome We're back, back at it. Yeah, we got um, episode five. We've done five of these. Can you believe it? I can't. I really can't believe it. Before we, before we hopped on, I was like, I can't believe we've done five episodes already. Yeah, it's been it's great. It's been a lot of, I mean, yeah, it's been fun, man. They fly through. I'm T-Dub. This is Justin. Um, if you haven't watched our channel before, check out our trailer. Learn a little bit about us. You know, we've got a ton of sort of tech and, and uh, industry experience, and we're just kind of here to chat and talk talk about the industry um, broadly. I, it work, you know, we're still trying to figure out our niche here, but, like, yeah. I thought today maybe we jump into, like, the tech and the future of retail because here, you know, we're both yeah. in the Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Macy's massive chain shuts down. We've had Nordstrom shut down. We've had West Mall shut down. Yeah. Um, really now, sad, man. Now, uh, yeah, now another big chain closing down. And I don't know how much of it is because of crime and SF, or is this if just kind of the the future of where we're going with um, retail spaces and just kind of wanted to talk, get your thoughts on it. I know a lot of people are interested in, like, hey, is this the San Francisco thing, or is this, like, yeah. the future of... I mean, is it, is it Macy's? Is it us? Is it the city? Like, what is it? What do you? What do you? Yeah, I think that. I mean, some of it is definitely kind of crazy, you know, zombie land stuff going on in San Francisco, where after the pandemic they just didn't maintain the same kind of ecosystem and infrastructure that existed there, and a lot of those areas just became more dangerous, and it's kind of sad that that happened. Uh, and so I, th- I still, I do think that you know, relative to like breakage within a retail environment and people, you know, taking stuff, et cetera, right? Like those are, like at the Macy's, all, I imagine they're operating on relatively low margins to begin with, right? So if you're not getting like the right. foot traffic and then people are worried about security and things like that, that right. probably exacerbated it a bit. But is that is that like the primary reason why you kind of take a step back and look at not just retail and SF, but retail generally is de- is maybe declining? I, I don't I don't know if you could kind of say that you know that that that's to, like totally had kind of all encompassing impact but uh, i don't think it, i don't think it's helps within san francisco for sure man so yeah what do you, what do you think is the future of retail now after the pandemic i feel like most people got used to online shopping yep and then when you're thinking about macy's and the accessibility of their products those aren't really products you need to go see and try on and make some crazy like decision on a lot i think a lot of that can be delivered to your door with return policies you probably don't need to go into macy's and and kind of like browse around like uh, you know especially not in a city where it's parking and all of that like i I don't know if this is a feature of of retail in general but i feel like this is definitely a macy's issue like in that demo it's a tough one, right? Like it's a tough business. I mean, all the all it's, really it's competing against business. Amazon. It's competing against yeah. other retailers. I think that the way to think about it is kind of less of death of Macy's, or that model, more about kind of the emergence of like the importance of omnichannel and what that means. What that means to brands. And I think. What do you mean? What do you mean by omnichannel? For yeah, so omnichannel. Yeah, for so omnichannel. Basically, it means it's like the different access points that people can can acquire goods and services from a company, whether that be kind of just like an in-store pickup or actually shopping in the stores or being able to order online and getting it delivered. How does that, how do you create the optimal mix between those experiences so that it's accretive to the brand in terms of their business model, but also for the consumer, you know, creating a better shopping experience. So I think, I think, I think every company is going to have to have the omni-channel strategy. I think they probably, you know, they already do now, but I'm trying to think about like, I feel like Target was one of the first companies to really do that well. I think that the way yes. that they kind of mixed that in-person and then online shopping experience, they were kind of like one of the first companies to do that well. Was that your experience when you were kind of using Target back in the day? Is that what you recollect as well? Yeah. No, they made that transition really smoothly over the pandemic in terms of like, as a place to go to get essentials, you'd think, oh, I can go to Target. And then when you go there... You know, the branding of, like, curbside pickup, the app mm-hmm. is really clean. Like, seeing yes. it everywhere, just, it just constantly reminded you of, oh, that next time I'm in a rush, I could just do that. Like, the, the park, I mean, it's really it's really well done because um, you're going there anyways, and you're seeing, every time you go in, you see the marketing of the mm-hmm. um, pickup, curbside pickup and app and convenience. So, it's, I think it's, you know, that's probably one of the better executions I've seen, I'd say. Even better than Walmart. Yeah. I mean... Walmart's not as big in, in the West Coast, 
Uh, but yeah. I don't feel like it was as well done and prominent um, as, as Target. Is yeah, that they're kind of the feeling you got. Yeah, that, that's the feeling I got. I think they're playing a lot of catch up. My sense, and I haven't kind of, you know, I haven't dived into the financials, but that Walmart has kind of figured that, you know, has figured that piece out more and leveraging their footprint to kind of do the fulfillment and be, you know, just uh, like same day delivery and, and all those other things that kind of like had a lot of value. So I think they, I think they've caught up relatively. I, mean, I don't think it was quickly. I think that they've caught up, but. I think they're, they seem to be doing another a better job now. Are there any other businesses do you feel like do that really well? I maybe ha- may have an example, but curious if you if you have any others. I mean, in terms of of pickup in uh, like Omni Channel, I think uh, yeah, that or like it being it being clear why for that specific business there's a model that exists where they still kind of like require that physical I mean, you know footprint Costco, or that they're able to leverage it. Costco mm-hmm. seems to yeah. be the one that I can't imagine i mean there is an online costco but you you know you're just trained to go to costco because of the the sheer size of all the stuff um and they just kind of like the samples and like it's just an experience um that seems worthy in store um like you know i want to go to costco and i'm gonna walk out here with things i don't need like it's just like yeah, <laughs> you're gonna discover products, right? Like you're gonna try something, you're gonna see something that's relatively yeah. cheap, and you need to know you needed. Um, it's one of the rare places. Yeah. Those where Costco you muffins, man. Going in there and being like, all right, yeah, you just don't yeah. know what you're getting. What's your what's your what's your, what's your target, favorite? What's your favorite? Where, yeah. Costco what's your favorite thing? in-store pickup for Costco? Yeah. What's your favorite Costco thing? I mean, for for me. It's it's usually a food thing, sadly. Like yeah, yeah. It's yeah. gonna. It's, Why sadly? I don't know. I just feel like I, I, that's something I don't need right now. More food, but um, <laughs> you know, it's usually like you know some random block of cheese or something that we pick up that we like, and then you don't ever see it again. But the most recent yeah. thing is the Vietnamese coffee, Mister Lee's. Ooh, I don't know if you've mm. ever tried that, but the, it's in the front. I'm, not, I'm not a coffee drinker. I know I'm a sociopath. I don't drink coffee. But <laughs> like I, it is. I do like Vietnamese stuff and food. Vietnamese and everything. Coffee, not, not coffee. I use it like creamer because it's very sweet. Mm. And it's condensed, but I, I just make my normal cup of coffee and I pour a little bit of that in there. It's amazing. Um, okay. Tong, Listen, Tong put me up. We about to become a food. We about to become a foodie channel. Yeah, yeah, you know, for sure. Might have to switch the vibes up. You? What, what are you uh, doing at Costco? You know what, man? My guilty pleasure for Costco is the is the muffins, man. Those Costco muffins, the blueberry ones, the chocolate ones. They're huge. Too. Fire! I don't know, and they're huge. I mean, I really shouldn't be. Luckily, I got you know. I still got the skinny guy genetic thing going on. I don't know how long that will last. My like biggest concern in life is that. I'll like get that little gut, you know, like the, you know, like the worms from Men in Black, yeah. how they had that little gut, how like Snoop Dogg even had that. I, I, I feel like I do not want to be that guy down the line, so I got to be a little careful about what I yeah, eat. Yeah, there, but, there are some uh, like they're so skinny, good. skinny beer gut guys, but I don't think you have that problem. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Um, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you talk about Costco. Like my example, I, th- I think Best Buy is really interesting. Um, um, even more model recently, in that. Even more recently, I feel like I've used Best Buy in a long time. I know I've I I used it for like like big big ticket item purchases, and I think that's still kind of a sweet spot for them. I know they went through a bit of a hard time during the pandemic, and people just weren't going in, and so I imagine they were just kind of going right to like Amazon or wherever else they were buying stuff. But I think their last earnings report was like pretty well, like they did pretty well, and. They're looking forward to a good Q4 this year based off of their sales. But I think on those like large ticket items where you're buying a huge TV or some that stereo system, et cetera, you kind of want a bit of a human touch. Yeah. And I think that's the interesting part. You know, some of the AI conversations we were talking about before, like there probably are still some models where you still want or need that human touch. You talked about like luxury goods. I feel like that human touch there is, the is really important because of how much money. Yeah, that white glove experience. I think what they've also done is, um, you know, they have other models where, like, I think they have, like, consultants that will come into your home and kind of look around and kind of tell you the different things that you would need in terms of, like, your setup. So they've kind of created that business. But, um, you know, they, I think they're also focused on kind of, like, same day, same day delivery and pickup and, and really trying to make it, uh, you know, a place that's, like, a, a stronger fulfillment center. So... That 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 business as well seems like it's kind of interesting in in executing omnichannel. I'm just but, trying um, to think. Uh, it's, it's funny yeah. you say that because I was I was talking joking with my friend 
what happened to Radio Shack? <laughs> like, remember that back in the day, yeah. there were the local Radio mm-hmm. Shack where you go pick up uh, 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 some cords for your games or something? Mm-hmm. That's gone. And then there was Circuit City and Best Buy for a minute. Out here, there was Fry's. All of those kind of mm. left. Best Buy and sort of the Geek Squad ended up like being the last standing. But I feel really? I don't actually. Yeah, I don't know the future of that either because I'm like, you're right. But how often are you buying a TV? Like, it's not. Every... I guess it's not necessarily how often you are buying a TV, but how Ed like yeah. how often everyone is buying a TV, and if it's like a regular enough kid, and it's not just TVs. I guess you probably go in there to get a TV, and then you buy some other stuff as well, right? Yeah, I guess, um, I guess when I think of Best Buy, it's like, oh, no, my printer broke, or I need I need something, like an electronic thing, and I'm not really overly concerned about getting the best price. I'm just like, hey, I need, mm-hmm. or hey, man, I really need an iPad, or I need a Christmas gift. Let me go browse around electronics. That, I mean, that seems like a, the place you would go, right? Like, uh, yeah, but wouldn't you just do that on Amazon though? Like, if it was just those smaller ticket items? Not, I mean, I would, but you know, these last minute shopping deals. If you're like, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm literally heading to a birthday party. I haven't picked something out out yet. I'm gonna go grab yeah. something. It's probably Best Buy, right? It's probably gonna be Best Buy or Target. Um, mm-hmm. Where are you gonna? No, go? I'm just gonna go grab the thing. Or if it's like, uh, I, somebody needs some help and they they need an HDMI cord, pro- probably going. To, Best Buy or something, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. I think the promo. I think I think you know, like on the, on the especially on the promotional piece. I feel right. like those places always have some type of deal too. So, but it has to be close enough, right? Like right. they have to have enough stores that are close, but not too many where kind of like managing the operating expense of having all these locations. So then here, so the Makes sense. we were talking about the future of retail. Like as a as a kid, I mean, obviously I'm I'm old as dirt, but as a kid. <laughs> Going going to stores with um, the mall with your family or going to mm, yeah. stores with your family and, and like, hey, we're going to get something to eat. We're going to shop around. Dad's going to go get a new belt and son's going to go get a pair of shoes. Whatever. Like, you do your thing at the mm-hmm. mall. Like, is that dead? Like, are we done with that era of, of a, a family outing experience? Like, a shopping family? Is that just... Not a thing I anymore. think I think it's still I think it's still happening not as regularly now and I think it's because it's less of a like parents are kind of going there because they you kind of pick stuff up but it used to be a destination for kids it used to be like oh can we go to the mall yeah. and I think it's just the proliferation of all these other kind of entertainment platforms that I think we've also talked about before and where people are spending their share of time that it's like just right. if you think of the mall if you take a step back and it's like the mall is just a a, a physical location for entertainment you think of share of time that was spent there versus other things in the past, like when we were growing up, and you got TikTok and you got these crazy immersive video games and everything else. Maybe people are still going there, but they're spending much less share of time. And I think that's, I could be, I could be wrong, but I feel like that's maybe one of the biggest kind of headwinds yeah. for those for those spaces. I mean, ultimately now everything is competing against each other, like you said, right now. Now, like mm-hmm. your attention and your your um, focus. Is com- literally competition. Everything's in competition with it, which is yeah, not the greatest thing for us. But also, like for consumers, I don't know. You don't know what's next, right? Like we were saying, this is the first yeah. time in our in a long time that I can remember. Like we're really at a crossroads of like online and you know physical things being in in real competition with each other. Like going to the movies versus yeah. going to the mall versus going to a coffee shop, all these things, like, do you really need them? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that's true. I mean, one of the things that I think is kind of interesting is if you look at, if you look at malls and, you know, a lot of companies can't have a mall presence, not necessarily profitable anymore, but you have this space that exists. And if these other brands that have kind of figured out Omnichannel can leverage them as kind of micro fulfillment centers in a way. So obviously they don't need like the largest of space as like a, Amazon would need through a whole like a, like through a Whole Foods location, right. but if you think of these individual stores for like individual retailers or for some of the ones that don't necessarily have a presence, that could be interesting. I, I wonder if even like Shopify, right, would have some type would want maybe they maybe they do do this or not. I don't know if you know, but like have some type of presence in like a mall where where vendors could fulfill through there as well could be kind of interesting. Yeah, I think doubling as a fulfillment center is. Probably where everyone will have to go, 
it's just it's just weird, right? That, now you're like, all right, my summer job is going to be at the mall, and ninety percent of my time is going to be packing and shipping fulfillment, and then the other ten percent is going to be like, hey, how are you doing today? What can I help you with? Or you're doing an in person mm-hmm. return, like right? Like that seems, yeah, that sounds right. Um, I think so, and it, and eventually it'll all be you know all be robots. <laughs> <laughs> right. If like yeah. if that's the job and it's that monotonous, if it's primarily just making sure that the person comes and gets the right thing and it can answer basic questions through like a natural human language interface. You know, why do you need the why do you need the fourteen year old kid to do that anymore? Yeah, that is that is true. Man. It's kinda of sad as I'm thinking through that now. It's like, man, I worked at I don't did you ever work at the mall? Did you ever work I at a mall? I worked at a mall. I did a hotel. That was my okay. that was a bus boy, but all right, we got to talk about that at some point. But I, I worked at, um, I worked at um, Brookstone, if you remember uh, yeah, that. Fancy. I think it may be all. No, actually, they still do have, and they still do have in-store location. But like, this is kind of sharper image competitor. I actually think sharper image is only online now. I think Brookstone kind of ultimately took them out. But I remember that time I was there, you know, flipping Tempur-Pedic pillows yeah. and beds and selling foot massages and all that. And that was like. A pretty seminal experience before I went to college. I took a I took a year off before college to kind of just explore the different stuff. Yeah, yeah and it, part of it in the Amazon, maybe we could talk about yes, we ha- we some of the stories to. from that. Oh my God, we we definitely got to do that. That'll be fun. That'll we'll be talk hilarious. about we'll talk about the Amazon experience, which would be like kind of fun. Not, not Amazon, but um, not yeah, you think Amazon about like so just the. Im- it's so amazing. interesting how when we do these top. Yeah, it's so interesting. We, yeah. <laughs> It's so interesting that when we do these topics, how many like how much of it kind of goes back to the things that we talk about in like you know Gen AI and and, and what's right. going and, and what's happening there and how uh, you know different spaces are being are being impacted and one of the one of the things I think is most interesting is that like AI and ML a lot of that stuff has existed for digital spaces for a long time but the kind of the last frontier is about physical space yeah. and how it and how it enters there and how AI hasn't been able to entirely map the physical world yet and how that plays into kind of retail and people's social experiences in those type of environments, et cetera. So, um, yeah, man, I, it, it's really fascinating how it always kind of comes back to to that impact. Yeah, I mean, I I have no idea what's to come of it. It just seems like the way it stands today, it's not, it's not doesn't seem sustainable because people are, yeah, their interests are kind of everywhere. Which means it's tough for one retailer to like survive. Or, I just I can't imagine how difficult it is now to be like, all right, I'm gonna open a physical store. That, like, oh man, that's a tough business. Listen, brother, the, the 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 people who do those tarot card shops. I mean, I've always been like, how much foot traffic are they actually getting? How do you make that business? Ow. work? <laughs> it's got to be a front I've or something, right? That. Like, just I mean, all nothing those, scares like, me more than stores. Like, how? you know. Having some type of retail location somewhere. I mean, that is, it's just, I don't know how. Yeah. I, bad respect to people who are able to make those businesses work. And my grandfather used to have his own retail business. He was doing upholstery. He ultimately, I think, moved it back into, into his house, but like for years had a physical location. It's incredible, man. It's really incredible. I mean, psychic reading, there's always room for that, I feel like. Maybe not. But do you, th- you, think, that, you, think, it's getting, you think they're getting enough foot traffic? To I make mean, that anyone who work? comes in there, I imagine the opening line is, I need you to come in here, and you're blown away. But I don't know. I, yeah. Retention. I guess. <laughs> Maybe we got to do that. Retention. All right, that's going to be one of the episodes. Is we're going to go in there. We're going to, we're going to, stru- yeah, we're going to, like, stream it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they probably have fentanyl that they're selling out the back, but I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was, I, listen, you said it, not me, for this episode, so let the record, let the record I mean, show. I have no idea, but, but it seems, it seems yeah. like something's up there. Um, yeah. Psychic reading, I don't, I don't know. That's so funny. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Anything else on top of your mind? Uh, this week I know it's short. We'll do. We'll keep it short. But what about online shopping? Anything? Um... Yeah, I recently. Um, so you know, Meta had crazy blood earnings recently, right. and this article that I read in the Wall Street Journal was about um, kind of e-commerce's push back into leveraging these channels and focused on Timu, Timu specifically, and how they were kind of doing this almost TikTok-like model of just spending billions of dollars with these uh, ad networks. And I think they spent like $2 billion 
with Meta last year, wow. trying to trying to capture share from like Amazon, et cetera. So, and that's just on Meta. I think they were doing it on Google as well. So, I it's just incredible how these online channels are growing. And you know, when you come from our space, you're in Silicon Valley, you kind of think that oh man, the penetration of kind of e commerce in that space it's got to be it's got to be higher now. But like. I think it's only around, you know, between 16, 20%, which I know is still relative high relative to, you know, five, 10 years ago, but it's not 50%, you know, it's not, and it's not higher than that. So it still has like a lot of legs to grow, man. Yeah. Timu is something else. I know everyone uses it now, or at least has tried yeah. it. Um, have you tried it? I, I haven't tried it. Yet. I have I've tried, I've tried it? it low cost. It's kind of like Alibaba, but like a little easier to use. Mm. Uh, you kind of know what you're getting, but yeah, I, th- yeah. I find it fascinating. It's, they definitely have taken over a, a, a segment of the market in terms of like low price, um, don't need it like two days. The, like the, the, all of those yeah. products where you're kind of like, yeah, you know, I'll try this out. Um, a random cleaner, or random toy that you not you don't necessarily yeah. need in two days. Um, you know, get it for like five bucks. It's kind of the leader. How did you discover it? Yeah, how did you discover ads. it? I think it is through ads. Through ads? Yeah. It like randomly Do you know where? Up. Was it like on TikTok like or Google for Instagram me. or something? Oh, wow. Like searching for something and then a, a team mm. ad pops up for something similar. You're like, oh, let me check this out. And yeah. then they have a smart like little tool where you're like, hey, 90% off if you buy five things. And you kind of like browse. Mm. Brilliant. Because now you're like, all yeah. right, I'm just going to buy five things. And then next thing you know, these you are history. Yeah, I know, right? These 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 Chinese based companies, like, it's really incredible how well it seems that they understand the American psyche. Yeah. And like how well they're able to kind of penetrate their products. And not even from an entertainment perspective, but like from from e commerce as well. Oh, totally. And you think about their tagline, like shop like a billionaire. It kinda like doesn't make sense to a certain extent, but it kinda does as well. Right. It's like why would a billionaire be buy this small like trinket no. item? <laughs> but it's like you're buying as if you have infinite resources, right? Which I think what they're trying to say. And that, that does kind of resonate in some, in some way. What do, you, what do you think about that? What do you think about the tagline to kind of go into marketing stuff for a second? No, no, it's, it's really good. Like, it, I mean, they get you with the low prices already. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. anything to make enhance that, I feel like they're, they're just kind of filling the void because you're like trying to justify, should I be spending, yeah. you know? Uh, if he's really good, so like any anything where they can amp up the value for you and say things like billionaire and this and that, makes you feel like oh you know it's not so bad. Um, everybody yeah. buys two dollar items. I think it's also interesting, like when you're doing marketing successfully, an eighth grader can understand it, right? right? Even if you're selling something more complex, and I think that's what they landed yeah. with that with that message. Yeah, very um, simple, super powerful. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. We'll, we'll keep it short this week. Appreciate you jumping on. Oh, man. This is like the highlight of the week. Yeah, this, is, this is super fun. And uh, you know, make sure you like and subscribe to content if, if you do like it. And uh, we'd love your feedback you know, in terms of comments, other, other topics that you'd like us to cover. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to catch up. We'll hopefully drop some gems and knowledge and want to be Next helpful. Time. So with the two uh, things well. we talked about, we got to hit. We got to go back to your your sabbatical or your one year off from school and, and your yes. journey there. We Let's gotta talk, talk about, about that. that. Got to talk about that. And we talk about first sure. job at some point, like what that was like and how mm-hmm. that's going to change in the future for kids in the future. Yes. I feel like that's going to be really interesting. And one of these episodes, you got to go super deep on your eBay. Oh yeah, for sure. eBay game. I got to like OG. TW crazy OG eBay sellers. and then, and I take your game. Mm. Well. Number one, you, okay. You don't. Okay, I'm now. I'm. I may just. I may just let you run, and I'll just be a uh, eating popcorn and watching yeah, episode we'll, we'll after. We'll do that one you, next. That. <laughs> um, for sure. Awesome, man. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Have a good weekend. Talk later. Peace.